After this lecture, we should be able to use the XRD pattern and Bragg's law to calculate the interplanar spacing D for a given plane with Miller indices H, K, L and to determine the crystal structure. X-ray diffraction is a non-destructive technique. Historically, much of our understanding regarding the atomic and molecule arrangements in solids has resulted from XRD investigations. Furthermore, X-rays are still very important in developing new materials. So in this lecture, we're going to give a brief overview for the diffraction phenomena and how to use XRD to calculate atomic interplanar distances and crystal structure. Well, here are just a few uses or applications of the X-ray diffraction. It can be used to determine the crystal structure, can be used to identify the compounds of an unknown crystalline material, also can be used in developing new materials, and we can differentiate between crystalline and amorphous materials based on the XRD pattern. In nanotechnology, XRD can be used when looking for impurities. For example, from the peaks of the XRD pattern, we can determine if we have or don't have an oxide layer that we don't want. Since we mentioned that we can use the XRD to tell if the material is amorphous or if the material is crystal, now let's just take a quick look at the different patterns. So we have three XRD results from three different materials. So the first one, or when you compare the first one with B and C, the first one doesn't have any defined peaks as the other two. So if a material, if the XRD pattern doesn't have any defined peaks, this means it's not a crystal, it's amorphous solid. Because amorphous doesn't have the long range order, it only has a short range order. So the length of the long range order will result in the XR, XRD pattern like this without any well-defined peaks. And B and C, both of them has well-defined peaks, but B is has a lot of noises, right? And C is as one line that very um, nice and clear, clean, doesn't have any noises. So B means the material is polycrystalline material, and C means it's single crystal material. So what's the difference between polycrystalline material and single crystal? Well. If a crystalline solid, when the periodic and repeated arrangement of atoms is perfect or extends throughout the um, entire material without any interruptions, and it is a single crystal. So in other words, if we have, for example, this is one unicell in the single crystal material, and another unit another unit cell has exactly the same orientation. We just stack them in order perfectly without changing the orientation. So the orientation means if we set up the X, Y, and the Z coordinates, all the unit cells will follow the same orientation. So this is a single crystalline or single crystal material. So on the other hand, for polycrystalline material, that means the unit cells have different orientations. Maybe within certain range, it has the same orientation, but overall, it has different orientations. For example, here, I'm just going to draw a 2D um, view of the polycrystalline. So we have a set of unicells in this orientation within this small area, but in another area, you will see the orientation kind of changed. It's in a different orientation. There's a 2D angle. And uh, here, there's yet another orientation. So this is poly 
crystalline material. Okay, and each each re, re, no, each re, region has the same orientation. It's called a grain. All right. So because of that, if you have a polycrystalline, has a lot of different orientations, you will have those noises result in the XRD pattern. But we still have the well-defined peaks. So this is the single crystal doesn't have those noises. Please find the link in Canvas to watch a video to see how to use an XRD instrument and the concept of the XRD techniques. Diffraction occurs when a wave encounters a series of regularly spaced obstacles that one are capable of scattering the wave and two have spacing that are comparable in magnitude to the wavelengths. And X-rays are a form of electromagnetic radiation that have high energies and short wavelengths. The wavelengths on the order of the atomic spacing for solids. So that's why we use X-ray to do the diffraction. When a beam of X-rays impinges on the solid materials, a portion of this beam is scattered in all directions. And sometimes the diffracted beam or diffracted wave can be collected as a form of energy, but sometimes the diffracted beam is annihilated. Well, let's take a look at when this beam can be collected or when the diffraction can happen and when the diffraction will not happen. First of all, let's clarify this diagram. So here we are, we are seeing some crystal planes or planes of atoms. We mentioned when we learn the Miller indices, the planes with the same Miller indices are parallel planes. For example, all the 111 planes in different unit cells are parallel to each other. And not only that, the interplanar spacing is also the same or equal between the neighbor between the neighbor planes. So we use D for the interplanar spacing, which is the distance between parallel planes of atoms. For example, let's take a look at the 111 plane in one unit cell. So this is 111 plane in one unit cell. And now if I expand the plane, actually the plane doesn't stop inside one unit cell. It actually extends all the way to throughout the entire grain, right? Entire crystal, if, if, if that's a single crystal material. And now if I draw two planes, you see those two planes are both 111 planes, but they are in different unit cells, but they are parallel planes. And interplanar distance D is the distance between the two planes. Now let's generate multiple equivalent planes. Now we have multiple 111 planes. They are all parallel to one another and the distance between the two neighboring planes is D and the D is the same for the same crystal material, crystal structure or for the same material rather. In some cases, the diffracted beam is annihilated. So this kind of diffraction is called disjective. So the scattered wave or scattered waves cancel each other out. There's nothing detected after the diffraction. Or in some other cases, the waves are constructive. They will reinforce each other. So we can detect the diffracted wave as a form of energy and we can plot it out. So in what cases the wave will be destructive and in what cases they will be constructive? Well, Reinforcement occurs and angles that satisfies the Bragg's law. In other words, we need to investigate the relation between the incident angle theta. 
So the theta angle is the angle between the incoming X-ray beam and the atomic plane. The wavelengths, lambda, and the interplanar distance, d. And we're going to summarize the three, the relation of the three quantities into Bragg's law. The Bragg's law states that diffraction occurs only when Bragg's law is satisfied. And here's the equation describing the Bragg's law. N lambda equals to 2 times D times sine theta. So where N is the order of diffraction. So conventionally, we use N equal to 1. Therefore, this equation can be simplified as lambda equals to 2 times D times sine theta. So lambda is the wavelength of the incidence beam. So actually, um, x-ray, right, the wavelength of the x-ray, which will be given, and d is the interplanar spacing of the plane, and theta is the angle of incidence. Well, for crystal with cubic structures, the interatomic spacing d is a function of Miller indices and lattice parameter A. So if we know a certain plane, for example, again, 111 plane, and we know the material, well, then we will know the lattice parameter. Based on this relation, we can calculate the interplanar spacing. D equals to A over the square root of sum of the squares. Let's take a look at the XRD pattern. On this XRD pattern, each peak corresponds to a specific plane that causes diffraction. For this example, we have the FCC structure, zinc blend, and the first peak corresponds to the 111 plane, and second small peak is 200 plane, and so far so on. So analyzing the peaks provides extensive information about the planes and the structure of the entire lattice itself. Here's another XRD pattern for an alpha iron, which has a BCC structure. So the first diffraction peak corresponds to 110 plane, and here is the atomic arrangement on the 110 plane. And second peak corresponds to 200 plane, and here is the atomic arrangement for the 200 plane. Apparently, the uh, atomic packing factor is lower, which means it has less atom per volume or per um, area on this plane than on the 110 plane. That's why the um, the energy or the intensity is lower. And the third plane corresponds to 211 plane. And here is the atomic arrangement on the 211 plane. If Bragg's law is not satisfied, we know that diffraction cannot occur for sure. But even if Bragg's equation or Bragg's law is satisfied, it doesn't mean diffraction can occur on all planes in the crystal structure. Well, here are some rules we need to we need to know. And also this will help us to predict the crystal structure. So for BCC structure. The diffraction only occurs when the sum of the Miller indices is even. When H plus K plus L is even, the diffraction can occur. So if we are given a XRD pattern with labeled peaks, the first peak is 110, second peak is 200, third peak is 211 and 220, so far so on. And we figure out HKL, the sum of each plane indices is an even number, then this is BCC structure. For FCC structure, the HKL 
either are all odd or are even. So if the first peak is one one one, second peak is two zero zero, and then the third peak is two two zero, the next one three one one. So they're all they're、um, a combination of all odd numbers or all even numbers. Then this must be an FCC structure. So for simple cubic, well, diffra diffraction can happen on all planes. So it can be it includes the、um, all odd or all even and mixture of odd and even, and some can be even or can be odd. Okay, so it's important for us to know this to predict the. Crystal structure from a given XRD pattern. Let's take a look at one example. We're given the XRD spectrum, and we're looking for the interplanar spacing of each phase, and the crystal structure, the lattice parameter, and what kind of material is this? And we're given the wavelength of the Radiation or the X-ray is 0.179 nanometer. Okay, so if we are given an XRD pattern or spectrum, the first thing I recommend you to do is to put the Bragg's equation or Bragg's law here: 2d sine theta equals lambda. So probably we're going to use it. All right, so that's relation between the interplanar spacing, which is Something we're looking for, and the theta angle and the lambda. Okay, so the lambda is given. So we are given lambda equals point one seven nine zero nanometer, and we're given this XRD pattern. So from the pattern, also we have this table of the peak indices, those labels, and the corresponding diffraction angle. Keep in mind that it's important for us to re recognize this two theta, but in the equation we have theta instead of two theta. So you have to do the calculation to divide theta by two,、uh, two theta by two to get theta. I did a quick calculation to、um, write the theta angle there. So first we're looking for the interplanar spacing.、Uh, let's just look for the interplanar spacing for those given. Planes. So we're looking for d for the two zero zero plane, d of the two two zero plane, d of the three one one plane, and d of the two 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 plane. Let's solve that first and then move on. All right. To find the, the interplanar distance, we just use Bragg's law. Where d equals to lambda divided by two times sine theta. So lambda is given sine theta for each corresponding plane set is also given. So we just need to use this relation to solve all of the interplanar spacings. So d two zero zero equals to point. One seven nine zero nanometer over two sine eighteen point three, and it is calculated to be point two eight five one nanometer. So use the same formula. We can calculate the interplanar distance for the other planes. And here are the results. Again, just use the same formula and plug into the different theta angles for the corresponding peak indices. So that's A part A. We already solved part B. Is what is the crystal structure? So again, to identify or to figure out the crystal structure, we need to check the diffraction peaks or the peak indices. The first one is one one one. And second one is two zero zero and two two zero, three one one. Well, if you add those indices together, it's not 
all even or not all odd. So that's that means it's not BCC. How about are they all even or all odd? One one one. The first pick has all odd indices, and two zero zero all even and all even or odd or even or even or odd. Well, this must be FCC structure because the indices are all even or all, all odd. Okay, so B, we will see. We will say that's the FCC structure. C, the lattice parameter. So for the lattice parameter, we know for cubic systems. The lattice parameter and interplanar spacing follows this relation. D for the HKL. HKL is the Miller indices for the plane. Equals A over the square root of H squared plus K squared plus L squared. So to find A, we just need to find one thing, right? Find A, which is equal to D interplanar distance or interplanar spacing times the sum, the square root of sum of the squares, and from the first step we already solved the interplanar spacing for sum of the planes, and we just need to use one of them to calculate the lattice parameter for the same material because for the same material there's only one lattice parameter. So you can choose any D to get A. Let's choose the two zero zero because it's easier, right? So for the two zero zero plane, the interplanar spacing is point two eight five one nanometer times square root of two squared plus zero squared plus zero squared, which is two. So we can calculate A equals to. Point five seven zero two nanometer. D. We're looking for what material is this? Well, how do we find what material is this? From all the values we have been using and we have calculated, there's only one, which is the materials. Characteristic, which is the lattice parameter. Okay, for different materials, the unit cell has a different size, and unit cell, the size of unit cell, also associated with the density of the material. Right, different material has different density, has different lattice parameter. So we just need to check the table to see A equals to point five seven zero two. Which material has the same lattice parameter? So let's just use the first set of data for the plane two zero zero plane with the interplanar spacing point two eight five one. We substitute that value into this equation, and here's the value we have. A equals to point five seven zero two nanometer. So this is the lattice parameter. The last question is, what material is this? Well, how do we tell which what material is this? If I give you the density of a material, can you figure out the material? You can, right? Because each different materials have different densities. How about well, what other quantities can we use to identify the material? From all the values we have over here, clearly the Miller indices for the plane, well, every all all the unit cells um, in all materials can have that. And lambda is the wavelength of the X-ray is not the material. And what else can we use? How about what if? Um, the lattice parameter A, and yes, that's a parameter. So that's one characteristic of the material. So we just need to check 
which material has the same lattice parameter, and that is the material we're looking for. So let's check the parameter tables of crystals. I will also upload this into Canvas for your information. For all the elements now, um, it's listed for different crystal structures. So FCC, we figured out the material should have FCC structure. And along all the FCC structured metals or materials, here is the lattice parameter A, but the unit of A is Anstrom, so it's 10 to the negative 10. And our value, if you still remember, is 0.57, which will be 5.7 astron, or 0.57 nanometer, which will be 5.7 astron. So check this table. This material should be potassium which has the lattice parameter 5.72 astron. So we can write this potassium has, or let's do this, A, the lattice parameter of potassium equals to 5.72 astron, which is 0.572 nanometer, which is approximately the same as 0.5702 nanometer, the result we calculated from. So the material is potassium is the material.